Welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the King and I Life podcast, hosted by myself, Soul Touch of the Poet, and my man, Son So Lex. And we got a panel of guests in here, consisting of Mimi, Sugar, and Renee. Um, I'll let them reintroduce themselves again. Go for it, ladies. Hi, I'm Renee, the Batter Queen. I'm Mimi. Hey. Hey, I'm Sugar. <laughs> And look here. How you doing? <laughs> look here. Renee says she's the batter queen. So check this out. Since she ain't plugged herself, and she I have a, and I have an issue plugging myself. Mimi, I mean, Renee makes the batters and the seasoning. So definitely we're gonna put her information out so that y'all can order them seasonings and batters from her. She got the, the They're good too. The good they the, are. They're really the, the good. seafood mm-hmm. batter, the, the chicken, chicken batter, the hot mm-hmm. fry batter, all that stuff. You know, but I'm going to let her talk about her stuff before we jump back into the conversation. Go ahead. Throw it out there, Renee. Hit them, Renee. Yes, I, I, I am the batter queen, and I make um, about five different um, batters and seasonings to um, uh, batter your all your meats and vegetables. Um, I even make a gluten-free one. Uh, I got my hands in um, a little bit of some of everything, trying to cater to everyone as far as... Um, you know, seafood, um, poultry, um, all beef. Pork, you name it, beans, green, potatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> ham, ham. You know yes, it. So, <laughs> uh, I am. I'm. 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 I'm going to make myself a, a household name. Uh, I've been told that I'm better than Larry's, so I'm mm. I'm wrong with that. Okay, I've uh, you know building a little legacy for myself here. So yeah. Um, if anybody wants to um, order anything, just get in touch with um, uh, Renee at um, rwwatson uh, at gmail.com and um, you can place an order. And there you have yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know about Lowry's, but like Lowry's don't have no spicy seasoning. She got some spicy seasoning, y'all. That's the bomb. Thank you, Tay Tay Sugar Baby. The bomb diggity. So let's jump back into this conversation. So the next question is going to be, do you feel there's an agenda to emasculate and or feminize black yep. men? And yes. this is yes. this is something that me and Sun Solex have touched on uh, previously. Um, Sun Solex, I'm going to let you go ahead and open up on this one. I, I definitely believe there's an agenda out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we as black people, we are a hell of a lot smarter than some other people want to give us credit for. So having these three ladies on here and they clearly see the shit. So there's nothing else more I can add to that. If we just, you go play with somebody else because we got too much sense for that shit. Go play with somebody else. You know what, we not have it. You, not, all right, I'm it's gonna start with the speculation of men and women. And this is going to go back to they taking kings and queens and scientists and inventors and everywhere from Africa. I'm not going to call them slaves because they're not slaves. They built. We were indigenous to this land, but that's another topic. We built this country. So we built this country because it was ours. But go ahead, go ahead. I digress. I digress. I digress. Y'all need to learn your history. Go ahead. I digress. Go ahead. Well, we know our history, but the thing we're indigenous is, to this. This is our the, land. This is United because, States. Because the minority, because we're not the minority, we actually are the majority, which we were led to believe and brainwash by the white man mm. that we are less than, which bing, you are bing, not. Bing. You mm-hmm. are never less than because we originated in one place and everybody was black until everybody started spreading the wild. And that's when, you know, color started to take place. Y'all don't want me to get me started on that there. Colors but is a constant. No, we don't because that's we crazy. talking about feminizing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you about it. So when mm-hmm. they have started separating the black family from day one, then you had to realize to uh, rely on one person, which was the woman. And most men are already, how do I want to say, a little bit feminine? Because most some men are feminine. And I, I'm not going to 
I'm not going to lie, because they were raised by a woman. And a woman does feminine things. So once you have that, you have, okay, now, you know, I want to be with a man. Or I want to, I, or a, uh, a little girl say, oh, well, I haven't seen my my, my mommy with a man, so I'm going to be with another woman because I want a, a, a strong woman like my mommy. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. So, I've never thought that way before. Good me either. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm like, but I'm just saying that is how it is. As as women, we are strong. We hold everything on our back. Even the men, we hold them on our back. So when a woman demasculate or tell a man that he cannot do it, it makes him feel even more less than. And that's why black black men go to white women. Point but you know what? I'm, okay, I'm gonna jump in there on you, Tay Tay. You know what? Because that's something co completely uh, off to the different. You know. No, no, I'm just topic. saying that. That I'm not talking about the white women thing. I'm just saying women are all naturally strong. We help. Yes. We hold it down yes. for everything. Yes. Yes, we so, are. But you know well, what? they so, okay. systematically took the black men from out of the home. So that right there and that's, what exactly. I was that's what I was going to say. So what, you know, I mean, the but thing they is... They took it out with women, welfare. First women, of all, we got into the whole women's rights thing. Hold on, child. I'm going to let you say this real quick. Just, just two seconds. The women's rights movement was never meant to include black women. They no, used they us. They, they used, used us, us so that they could move and then they left our black asses behind and they Amen. took our men out the home. They took our men out the home and that's when we became strong and educated and all that kind of stuff. And we left them behind because the only model the black woman ever had was the white woman. Mm -hmm. And that's the fucking truth. Mm -hmm. All we had to look at the white woman. So when the white woman, I see your face. So when the white woman, <laughs> you know, so they pulled us into that bullshit and we started thinking, no, the white woman. I mean, we started modeling their hair, their makeup, their clothing, the way they live, the way they do things. Their we bodies. Don't who we are and their bodies. What? We don't. That's all we've had to model. Not me. So we let them take our men out the house and tell them they let we let them tell us that our men weren't. We don't good need a man. Men. But we they don't won't need them there. We brought into that bullshit. But they won't. And that's argue. why then that's what started this bullshit. So now we have little boys, we raising our men. And we don't know how to raise a man. That's right. But you we know don't. what? I, right. But anyway, go ahead. I digress. Go ahead, Renee, because I can go. I, you know, <laughs> y'all know I'm on some whole other shit. So go ahead. Yes. But you know what, Mimi? But you you touched on it. I, like you said, it, it it comes down from the system removing our men from the household. You know what I'm saying? At first, they were sending them to jail forever for for, for, for selling weed and 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 dope and and all this other stuff. Now they've Brad. you know they've they've legitimized weed. So now you know. But but our our black men are still sitting in jail forever. You know what I'm saying? For a motherfucking dime bag or a nickel bag. You know what I'm saying? But still, our, smoking our, black, our black men are still sitting in jail. So the thing is, is this, that leaves the black women to, to, you know, try to raise a young black man. And no, we don't really know. A woman is not supposed to turn a man into a man. That's what the man is supposed to be there for, to guide his footsteps. You know what I'm saying? I did the best I could with, you know, having one boy and five girls. And I raised my son the way I would want to meet, you know, I've raised him in in the manner of which, which you know, I, I would want him to be strong, to take care of a, his family. You know what I'm saying? And to not be a womanizer and to not be a part of the system and everything. So far, I think I've succeeded. You know what I'm saying? But everybody don't. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you you have you you have these women bringing different men in and out of the household and stuff, and because they feel mm -hmm. like that's not their seed. They don't feel like they have to be an influence on that child. And I do believe that it takes a village to raise a child. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, yeah, so you came into a household and little Tommy don't belong to you. Well, if his little Tommy daddy ain't there, then nigga, you gonna be in her life, then you need to step up to the plate and help her, help her, her son Praise become this. a man. Mm -hmm. You know what this. I'm saying? So that's how I feel. And for that reason and that reason alone, you know, I have I never drug different men in and out over my children. I didn't exactly. start dating again until after my kids was grown because I didn't want them to to see, you know, all these different. It's just like, you know, when a um when a lion 
comes into a a, a, a new a new pack. You know what I'm saying? What he do was he if if he take out one male, he'll kill all of the other kids instead of coming in and just raising them to be like him. That shit don't work with me. You know what I'm saying? But that's animalistic. But you know what? They have been working on our black men for the longest. Like I said, they yes. took them out the household with the welfare and all that bullshit, right? And then, you know, you started getting them into drugs. Yep. So then, like in the 70s, it was Vietnam and drugs. They came home, they couldn't have jobs and all that kind of stuff. Pop to the 80s, now you got crack right. and all this stuff, which they put in our neighborhoods. Then right. they come so on a little further and we had the AIDS. Okay, so there you go. Then there's incarceration. Then you look at this, you look at stuff. Then there's the music, because remember rap music used to be positive. It was about positive images. The Cosby show had people going to college. I was proud to be in a, a HBCU, right? All of a sudden they switched and they, a gangster rap came out. So then that whole mentality changed and we've been fucked ever since. Everything they throw at us, we drink it. We drink all that Kool-Aid they serve us. We drink it, we drink it, we drink it. And now our men, they don't Look know the rappers, man. Look at the rappers, man. And we ain't no better. We women ain't no better. Yeah. We ain't no better. Yeah. So let me ask because you, now you want a question. You want to be that's so another, independent. But that's another topic. That's but another because topic. Because us women want to be so, so independent. That so we now they're walking around here with their asses hanging out. They got this this, this thug culture. You walk around your, th- your ass is hanging out. It's OK. Now it's you want to wear skinny jeans. It's OK. Now you want to wear earrings and stuff everywhere. It's OK. I mean, oh, listen, y'all want me to tell y'all about the skinny jean thing? Not yet. That thing right there is <laughs> making dudes sterile. That shit is making men sterile. That's why. <laughs> That's why they keep pushing that shit. No oh, more black babies. And did you see? And did you see where um, they say, "Oh, it's okay for men to wear skirts." It's the not what? okay. It's not okay. But let me ask y'all a question. Since y'all went down that road. Um, we all feel, and a lot of us, you know, feel like it's an agenda to emasculate and feminize black men. Now, do you think basketball that, players? Go ahead. Do, do you think our men overall are not capable of reversing this? Being that you know the woke people out there and all that, they they know this. I hate that this. term. I, I, I hate it too. That's why air quotes, but. Why do y'all think that with that with that agenda being known, why do you think that none of them are doing anything about it? Because they ask what can they do? They're gay. They can ask what, what, I mean, that, you know what? It's like I look at a lot of the, the sports players, like you know, I look at the LeBron James and all these basketball players. What the fuck are they wearing? These football players, what the fuck are they wearing? Excuse my profanity, but I'm gonna keep it real. What the fuck are they wearing? Why are they wearing all these little tight pants and and ridiculous things? Look at Cam Newton. What the fuck is that? That flower pot shit on his head. <laughs> what is that? You know, little kids yeah, look up to that. Little, little boys, kids look up to that. When I was growing up, little that. kids wanted to be, you know, OJ and Franco Harris. Not I'm I'm dating myself, but you know, little kids looked up to that. These were men. Yeah, men. Evil can okay. evil, you know, stuff like right. that. All of that. Now, what is, wrong, what is wrong with little boys and stuff wanting to play with the tanks and being the the cowboys and the Indians and all that stuff? Right. Now, Landy, it's you like, posed a question. You posed a, Landy, you posed a question. Can it be reversed? I, I don't think that they want to reverse it because, you know, I mean, I think that they think that it's a struggle in itself. So the thing is, is this, you know, they have all of these these entities attacking them from all different corners and everything, which, you know, I feel like don't nobody got the black man's back the way a black female. But, you know, what we Damn, down they don't want us. Cost, you know what they I'm saying? Don't. And then who do they turn to? They turn to Becky with the good hair. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? I mean, he makes her feel like, you know, she is just so holier than thou. And then, you know, he feels so he feel like, you know what? Hey, look, I got the white man telling me I can't be this. I got the black woman telling me I can't do that. I got, you know, my my, my pops was removed out of the damn out of the household. And then I got my mama down my ass saying to myself, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna whip, I ain't gonna grow up to be shit because my daddy wasn't shit. So who else do they turn to? They turn to the, to Becky with the good hair, and she she make him feel like a king. So no, why should he he try to resort to go back? You know what I'm saying? Because you know it's gonna be too 
it's going to be too much flat for him. You know what I'm saying? Nah, he don't want to reverse that shit because he feel it's easier going on with Becky with good hair, you know? Well, you know what? I want to touch on something that you just said. You said you got the mother saying it ain't going to be shit, the whatever saying it ain't going to be shit, and this, that, and the other, so they think it. Let me tell you. My mother told me I wasn't going to be shit. I had a lot of people telling me I wasn't going to be shit. But at no point in my life that I feel I needed to run to Becky with the good hair, no point in my life that I feel <laughs> like, no point in my life that I feel needed like. needed the comfort of a man. Look here. No point that I feel emasculated. No point that I feel feminized. No point that I do I or have I ever felt like I needed to fit in with that bullshit. So I'm trying to comprehend why these men who are in positions to make change are falling for this bullshit and leading our culture down the damn tub. Because, they because, because that's what their handlers, handlers, told, them that's what their handlers <sighs> told them to do. That's what their handlers told them to do. It's the money. people you know who what? signed they the check, that's it. what they, they told them to do. Yes. They don't want it. Little you know Nas, perfect example. Do you really think that Little Nas is going to walk stop, around stop. Here and, and lap dance the devil? <laughs> now look, we all talking. No, Little Nas's handlers told him, black ass, look, little nigga, little nigga, take them clothes <laughs> off, put this G-string on, and go lap dance that devil. And then we'll pay you. Look, you think you really wanted to do that? Y'all come was on now. About this. They getting that check. Whoever signed that check, do it for them. Matter of fact, it's so funny. What's his name? Takashi Six Nine oh, had Lord. um had a little video without telling that you know you don't own yourself. You do what they tell you to do. And these stories, that's a whole nother conversation. But their handlers tell them this is what they're going to do. Their handlers tell them you're going to put this skirt on, you're going to sing this music, you're going to do this, make it more uh, gay friendly for everybody. That's their handlers signing that check. That you know, y'all was talking about this the about other day, and then and then Sun Solek sent me the video today, and I tried not to watch it, but he sent me a Marco Polo, and I said, I'm going to give it a chance. Um, I had to cut it off as soon as he gave the devil a lap dance, because you know what, we're not going. I, I was right. already I was already thrown off by the the uh, the imagery of the snake and him being kissed by the snake, and and I was turned off by that. I couldn't even focus on the words of the song because I was so. I, I don't I even so want to know the words of the song. I, I, I was I, just I, 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 the hook is going to get stuck I, in my head. I don't even want to listen to it. I, I I never seen it. I don't think I want to see it. But I'm fi- I'm going to make a lot of people mad right now. I'm Do it, make girl. All of you mad right now. Because, Leo Power. <laughs> set them on fire. Go ahead. Set them on fire. <laughs> because if you were to realize that the snake and all of those imageries is what the people are doing right now, people are lap dancing for the devil. Mm. Hey, Amen. Absolutely. I love the way you put that. The, and, and they are kissing snakes, which is, you know, you know a snake is not your friend. So mm. you kissing that snake. You kissing the snake. You lap dancing for the devil. You have the 666. And they mad because them damn shoes is telling the truth. It's a whole Bible verse on them mm. damn shoes. Mm, mm, so mm. When, you, when you talk about what this little boy is doing, all he's doing is what they are telling him to do, which is already in place and in play. Mm. I like the way you and put you that. You know why they telling him to do it? Because so many kids like him. Right. And there are videos where he was, gone, he was going around the elementary school and he got the little kids singing his little the country song Road. so they know who the he is. Road. They know him. That song is like broke records. Everybody knows what it is. The children know the words. They mm. love him. So who matter to turn the kids out? Because you know they're going to listen to him. So now exactly. they're going to have kids mad at their, their parents. Tell, you know, your parents going to say, oh, don't listen to him. Mama crazy. Daddy crazy. No, we won't listen. So then, you know, You've already, when you let your expose your kids, all that kind of stuff, you've already give, given them to the devil. So, yep, you have free same. reign already. And I'm telling you, people are going to be mad. They're going to be mm-hmm. cussing you out about this damn podcast. But I'm, what I'm saying is, <laughs> what I'm saying is fact and it's so damn true. They're not even going to want to hear you no damn more because it's mm. already written. It's already written. 
And if That's you don't it. think it's not written, then you are not you. Wow. Say it, girl. <laughs> Son, so let's preach. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this, uh, two things. Um, one, six neutrons, six protons, six uh, electrons. Um, two, uh, when you see the snake, when they take something that was for our people, that was beautiful and they've transformed it into something that's fucking horrible, despicable, that's when you see the images like that. Um, as far as doing your actual research on the snake, I'll leave that to everyone else's imagination. I, I would say go do your research on that, um, not getting into the religious thing. Um, but my whole thing is, again, you got to think about uh, energy, frequency, and vibration. So when you hear little Nas X singing- Oh, they talk um, my language. You're, you're hearing this 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 young man, uh, he's gotten popular with this song. So that energy, that frequency, that vibration has been cast all over this, this uh, nation of ours. So now when he comes back with this bullshit that he got now, these younger generation of kids, they relate to that energy, frequency, and that vibration because they become accustomed to it with the old town road. Now, we as parents, as uh, adults, the ones of us who actually know better, because not all of us know, let, let's be real about it. Some of us are, are just really ignorant to the fact that, you know, no diss to them, they just don't know. Right. But the ones of us who actually do know, it's on us to teach our kids. It's on us to influence our nieces and nephews and make sure that they are aware of what's going on. Because a lot of time, times, uh, again, their parents, they're not paying attention to it like that. They're, they're so caught up in this that, uh, goddamn world that they, they fail to realize who they are and where they came from. So right. that's that's the they, major they, they're, they're part about these, it. They're, they're letting these... Um, uh, what do you call it? Celebrities uh, raise their children, and I exactly. don't agree with that. For sure, I don't agree with that because you know what? They got their head so far off a damn man or woman's ass, a blunt and some Hennessy. You know what mm. I'm saying? I mean, you're not paying attention to your children, you know. And I'm not. Uh, you know don't what? Don't forget Before, the TV, <laughs> TV, iPad, social media. Right. Before the internet, you know, boomed off and everything. Look, my kids had to earn the right to get a cell phone. My kids had to even earn the right to get a job because me as their parent, it was my job to take care of them. So mm -hmm. having a job was a privilege. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If your attitude ain't together, if your schoolwork ain't together, if your house chores ain't together, if you ain't shooting, bringing your brothers and sisters together, you cannot have no job. You cannot have no cell phone. You, I, I, I wasn't going for none of that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't look for Michael Jordan them to raise my goddamn kids. It was my job. Because that's what God said it was. It was God. God did me, day mama. You know what I'm saying? So I did what I was supposed to do. I didn't look for um, Cardi B and and I cube them. You know to raise my goddamn kids. I, I'm not. And little Nas X, X or whatever the hell his name is, baby, where's the cancel button? There's no such thing as cancel button. The thing about this is, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like generational curses. You have to break them. Because you no, never want to be like the person that you you seen growing up. You you don't want to mm -hmm. be that, and you don't want your kids growing up to be that. I, I'm like I'm like Renee. My kids didn't have jobs because their job was school. So any any time my kid did well in school, they got paid for doing well in school, and which is incentive to do well in school. Right. They didn't. You have know what my child did. My child had a pay uh, pay as you go phone. Right. And I only put money on that phone based on things being done in the house, schoolwork, stuff like that. If that stuff wasn't done, there was no money put on the phone, right? Mm. And I will tell you, we got homework done. I mean, it was a great incentive. It worked. It worked for mine. I don't know if it'll work for everybody. It worked for mine. Um, but no, I, I was mom. I was in control and whatever. But go ahead. I think yeah, my kids didn't I, have no social media, no none of that. 
I it was none of my kids had no social media till they went to college. So like I got a funny story about social media. In college. Me, huh? Yeah. I got a funny story about social media in college. My child was in college, right? And apparently she wasn't going to one of her classes. And this is back in the days of um, MySpace. And, you know, I was teaching at the time. So my students showed me how to get on MySpace and to navigate and all that stuff. So I looked my daughter up. So I found her account and it wasn't private or anything like, you know, you can do Facebook. So I said, oh, there's her account. So I'm looking on it, seeing what she has. And I see that she has some comment about she's not in her math class or whatever. She's sitting up here in the computer lab. She's supposed to be in math class. She don't feel like going. She's not going, ain't been, all this old stuff. Just putting it all out there. So say her name was Red Robin or whatever. I'm just using that example to protect her innocent. I mean, yeah, she wasn't so innocent. <laughs> we don't say right? no names here. <laughs> we ain't gonna say no names. So we just say it was Robin Hood. Um, <laughs> so I made an account. The kids at school showed me how to make accounts. So I was mother of Robin Hood. <laughs> And I walked up on her wall and I put pictures of these looking eyes like, we're not going to class. Wow. <laughs> Girlfriend was so scared to come home that day. She came home. She was terrified. I didn't say one word. <laughs> mm. So I waited for a little while. I didn't say anything. I let one day go by. I let two days go by. Finally, she was going to school, whatever. So I'm like, going to class today? You're going to sit in that computer lab again. And she was just blown. Anyway, I'm not good uh, at storytelling, but it was funny. It was funny is- when it happened. But anyway, but I went to, um- after that, mama stopped writing checks in school, and she was on her own. I want to um, jump on something that you were saying about the uh, <laughs> about the, um, the, the the phone thing and, and something that Renee was saying and, and um, Shante was saying, you know, I think things went bad or started going worse was when the internet started really, really blowing up. People was throwing tablets and uh, smartphones in their kids' hands and and letting them have at it. And that was a catalyst to a lot of this nonsense, especially when it comes to emasculating and feminizing Black men because they're overexposed to this stuff unmonitored and Uh there it is. You want you like because it's like, like well, let me... huh? No, I'm, go ahead. I finished that. I, I got a question. I was, I was going to say, um, you know, because like with with me, I'm pretty sure all of us be walking down the street or something one day, and you see a child doing something that's just odd. It's like, what the what hell? What you doing? What are you doing? Yes. Where do you get that from? Yes. And, and then, then you start hearing things, and then you stumble across it, and then you're like, "This little boy is acting like a little girl because he saw this, that, and the other." Or this little girl is acting like, that. and it's like, if parents were having kids before they were of age to be a parent mentally, and that's all I got to say on that. Oh, move on. I just wanted to, to say you have to break generational curses. I had I had my kid at 17 years old. My daughters don't have no kids at all. Mm. My oldest son had his kid at 21. Youngest son had his uh at 20. So like, come on. You but have these, to break those curses. I'm just gonna interject right quick. These women are dropping real rules on the listeners right now. Yes. So I, I'm I'm just Throwing it out that people pay attention because they're giving you the game for free right now. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm good. But no, seriously, like we have to, as black a, a black community, take it back. It can't be, oh, don't say this to my kid. Don't say this. if you don't want anything to say, no one to say anything to your kid, then your kid won't learn. Mm. Because I know That's because our you know, young ladies and our young men are learning from reality TV. Everybody Oof, in my house knew that I got did something wrong. And mm. I got my ass beat by everybody in that damn house because I was down the street acting up. Yep. Mm. So my this I have this little, you know, block, and I know this little girl, she curses these little boys out. You get what I say? Mm. But I just like, you know, you're not supposed to be talking like that. 
don't be talking like that. But I have to giggle because she keep giving them the business. But she you know, so heard it from her mama. When you consider the fact that like computers and tablets and all that stuff, they're new to us, mm-hmm. but they've been around long before uh, public distribution or whatever. Right. Do you think that this was part of the plan? Do you think that all of this, do you think, well, I already know it is. I don't know why I'm asking y'all. When you do your research and you look at Sigmund Freud's brother, oh God, what's his name? The master of all this marketing and stuff. Do you think that they kind of like knew that putting these things in place would have the cause and effect that it has today? Um, Let me jump on that. I'm going to say they knew, but they didn't know that it would get so out of hand. And when it got out of hand, they tried to find ways to redirect it, but they couldn't. And because of public outcry and all this bullshit acceptance, they had to adjust to where it was okay and it still got way out of hand and because it's so far out of hand it's like that whole thing with the Bugs Bunny cartoon if you can't beat me might as well join them so it's, it's it, it has it has transformed into an agenda that they justify but they have no goddamn control over it I think it's going according to plan I, I think, think it got out of hand. And, and the plan, I think it's, it's a new plan. They're playing better than they ever dreamed of. I really do. I really, so, really do. Because they're getting more information out there to the masses. This is about information to the masses that they never could have get gotten in school. They never could get got um, through... By traditional um, means. Exactly. It, it, it's getting information that, you know, if you want to do, you can Google something. Google tell you everything you need to know. It right damn on sure do it. Enough people don't right do it. Enough people don't Google the right things. But anyway, mm. they want to know what the basketball wives are up to. And now we are in the <laughs> part. We are now living in the life. Our lives are now based on, you know, it used to be art imitated life. And now life is imitating art. So people, whatever we see on TV and on videos and in media and all that bullshit, that's what we think is real, and that's what we're buying. It is we have done the whole flip, and mm-hmm. that's why we're all on this trajectory, and it's crazy. Yeah. Then anyway, so let's jump into the next question. Um, should transgender females be obligated to reveal their birth sex to potential? Damn partners? right. Yes. Damn I right. So. Yes. Damn right. Mm. I do. I mean. Hold on. I would want to know if I'm dating somebody, I'm feeling a guy or whatever, as a guy think it's a man or whatever, and I'm (laughs) feeling somebody, I want to know if he got a coochie down there. I want to know. Don't get me all into you and we having conversations and I'm like, oh, I think he might be the one. And then I reached there and you got a coochie like, I I got one. No, Hmm. so I think it's only fair that people have a choice. I mean, some men are probably all right because a lot of transgender women are beautiful. They know how to put the makeup on and do the lines and hide the Adam's apple and all this stuff. Right. That's fine. Some men just say, fuck it. What's his name? Malik Yoba said, you know, the hell with it, whatever. He like him. <laughs> but I mean, I just Eddie think it's like about him. choices. Yeah. And and Teddy Pendergrass obviously liked one too. He learned the hard way. But uh, I think no that- No pun intended. <laughs> <Good work. laughs> but I mean, I think it's only fair to have a choice before you start giving that mental energy to, mm. to someone. You should have a choice. If that's not your thing, it is simply not your thing, and you shouldn't try to force it on anybody. Period. Right. So, see, you yeah, know what? And I then, think, you know, I when people get they mad, they... and when you, you know, wait a minute, let me say this real, real, real quick. Okay. When you play with somebody's psyche like that, you get somebody all mentally involved or whatever, and they think they one way, and then you hit them with that, everything their whole life, everything that they've been taught and felt their whole life is just shattered. So, you know, you might face some repercussions or whatever, like getting your ass whooped. So you should Dying. absolutely be upfront and let pe- and that part and let people you know, have that 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 right to make a decision if they want to fuck with you or not. To sit there and deny yeah. somebody that that right can have some right. detrimental consequences yes. because you can only deal with how you deal with things. You cannot predict how another person 
person is going to handle something. Yeah, you could say, oh, he shouldn't hit me or he shouldn't be mad or whatever because we get along. You don't know that person's history. You don't know that person's psyche. So you need to be honest up front and walk away or allow that person to walk away. So yeah, you damn right you should tell what you are. Facts. Shantae, was you, was you trying to divert that question to us to answer? Yes, I sure was. Okay, so we we actually discussed this um, on a, a podcast episode before this and, and a couple times before. Um, I think for their well-being, is, as far as I'm concerned, you better reveal that to me. Um, and, and it's not any, no, no hate against them, but... I don't want to be in a position to where I'm getting connected mentally and emotionally with this person and then come to find out, oh, well, surprise, boing, I don't know, don't do me like that. Because I'm going to have an adverse reaction to that. And my main reason for that is because I was molested by men as a child. I don't take too kindly to that. I'm, I'm going to zap the hell out if if you deceive me like that, if you play with me like that. If, if you were born the same gender as me and you think you have an interest in me or think you want to approach me, you better tell me. I, I had one person come at me like this a couple years ago, looked like a female all up and down. I was like, uh-oh, somebody trying to holler at me. We get the conversation back and forth, and this joke was like, I got to tell you something. I was like, all right, what? I'm a man going through transition. I was like, I can't do that. And this joker was like really trying to sell it to me like, like a used car salesman. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you, well, you don't know and give it a try. I was like, nah, I can't do that. I'm not doing that. I'm, no. Well, why not? Why not? Like, look, I'm telling you now, I don't rock like that. Um, you, I, I respect you as a person, all that, but I'm, I don't get down like that. You, Tell if, if you got okay. Put it like this: Women want to know what it, if if you know if 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 people want to know your your sexual history or this that and the other, then it should not be a problem. You telling me your gender history? Amen. Right. I think that when you go off into hiding which years, what it was, or what you you're gonna be then there's deception there. And I mean, if you, if you okay with it, then you shouldn't have a problem with coming right on out and being like, Hey, look, I used to be John and now I'm Jennifer. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I, yeah, don't, don't do that to me. You know what I'm saying? Because get, mm. that, I just kind of feel like that's entrapment. You know, that's just like the, mm -hmm. the 15 year old girl that wants to date the 40 year old man. You know what I'm saying? And she's saying, well, I, I'm 18. So 18 is legal. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, I mean, he might want to be a pedophile. Give him the choice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let him know that you 15. He still might want to tap. You know what I'm saying? But mm. give him the choice. You know, so yeah, no, I, I you best to come out and tell me what it is. And you know, I mean, I lost a good friend that way. I'm not gonna like you. I grew up with this little girl. You know, we would like what I was the oldest, you know, so I was seven and she was six. You know what I'm saying? And and she slept, she slept with my kid's father in in a, the she what she was trying to do was sabotage it to where to where I would leave him. And she would be there to console me because oh, she was wow. in love with me. And I was like, no, nah, baby, no. You know what? She checked this out. See, what he about to do is take this ass whooping. And, you know, if he want to be, if he, if you know, I mean, but I can't be with you because I don't rock that way. And I've been molested and I've been raped and I still don't want a female. You see oh, what I'm saying? I Ain't nothing going to run me away from a black man. And that's I just, uh, that, that's that on that. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not gonna have all this trickery and shit thrown my way. Mm. That's right. Anybody got time for that? Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's when it comes down to something like that, you you gotta be upfront with people, man. Again, like uh, Mimi was saying, it's a choice. You gotta let them have that choice. And when you take away their choice, you know that's basically setting you and them up to get in a situation where both of y'all potentially could one of y'all could go to jail and one of y'all could lose y'all life if not yeah. both on both occasions right um 
when you you it's have a, a female portraying uh, one thing and she or he is really another, and you you giving this this man uh, oral pleasure or something like that, and then he finds out later that you know you were actually born uh, a man. It's not going to end well for you. I, I promise yeah, you. Yeah. A lot of men, they mentally just not, they can't take that. So <laughs> I'm just saying, you got to be upfront with how you came in this world, man. It, it's just, it's too crazy out here right now. Yeah, that. like y'all saying, you know, I mean, I accept you for who you are. I don't have anything against Prince. My baby mm-hmm. girl is gay, okay? And I love her to death. You know what they, you know the saying, hate the sin, love the child. I love my child. And actually, if, you know, with, with having a gay daughter, it made me open up my eyes to a whole bunch of another world out there because I was very judgmental at first. And I'm not going to lie to you. I tried to beat that out of her. You can't beat that out of her. She's never been molested. You know what I'm saying? She's never been raped. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, we we had a little dysfunction going on, but I mean, nothing more than any other, you know, person. But still, it wasn't enough to just say, I do believe that some people can come here and and and, and be born that way. I think that she was one of those people, you know what I'm saying? But I it, it made me open up my eyes to a whole nother world out there. So I look at people differently. I don't have anything against gays, transgenders. I just don't want them imposing themselves on me you know what right. i'm saying exactly. and i don't feel i kind of feel like they feel like straight people impose themselves on on them but it's huh. not god damn it you know what we were the norm at first we right. were the norm yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so i just kind of feel like they want they want us to dumb ourselves down to be a part of their world and i'm not about to do that well, you know what? They're actually competing with us and they're all actually saying that they are real women. Yep. <laughs> so how the hell are you going to take the female side no, of the This is true. Of, this is a real thing. And, a real and thing. always. If you don't, you don't know what it's like to bleed every month or right. to have a cramp or to right. have a, those hormonal imbalances where you feel oh, a certain way a couple weeks ago, PMS before your your, your period comes or whatever. Yeah, you right. don't know what it's like to give birth. You yeah. don't have our hormones, so you can't have feel the same way we feel about things, the world or whatever. You just Yeah, can't. I don't care how and many hormones they inject into you. And even they though, not the ones, you know, they, not, right, they know, come in you, equivalent it's to the ones that we perform with. You don't have the energy that we were blessed to have. It's all about energy and what's inside and our connection to the universe. You're not connected to the universe in the way that we are connected to the universe. Thank you will girl. never know what it's Thank like it. to be a woman. Just mm. like I, I will never know what it's like to be a man. You and can attach me right. me surgically, but I will never know what it's like to be a man. And they can never understand what it's like to be a woman. I don't care how many hormones you take. I don't care how big your titties uh, are that they, they put in you, how much silicone. I don't care what you do with your hind parts. I don't care if they create a vagina for you. You will never know what it's like to be a woman because you will never have that God-given energy or that connection to the universe that we have. We Thank love you, though. You. Mm. We love you, but you hey. will never be a woman. And that's what it is, baby. That's Hurry. what it is. <laughs> But um, they can have my uterus. I don't want that bitch no more. Hey, <laughs> 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 you said they can have it. You know what? Damn Even it, if they came out of way, look, and don't look in our lifetime, we will probably see a transgender pregnant in our lifetime. I wouldn't mm. even be surprised. When you off. look at the research, they have learned how to make cells. Now, I was reading an article today where they have now learned how to create cells. So you start mm. creating cells and learn how to, you know, create the embryos with the cell or whatever. Never. Let me tell you something. They ass is going to hell. They are. They going to they hell. <laughs> but once again, do you think they? We we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, we especially want to thank our guests, Miss Mimi, Miss Renee, and of course Miss Sugar. Sugar down, yeah. But uh, anyway, yep. 
Why she get that extra? No, why she get that extra stuff? Oh Lord, oh Lord. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna uh, close this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna close this she out. <laughs> she was showing something over there in that panel. <laughs> uh, boy, oh boy. Again, thank you for tuning in to the King and I Life podcast. Uh, we will definitely have these ladies back on if they are willing to come back on. Yeah. Uh, again, y'all can reach us at um, K I N G A N D. E-Y-E 369 at gmail.com. Again, that's King and I uh, 369 gmail.com. And please, ladies, if you got something going on, you know, your business, plug yourself, get your name out there. Tell them how they can contact you. Oh, no, we ain't doing none of that. You know what I'm saying? We already got problems. Ah. We ain't doing that. All right. Uh-uh, anyway. they don't play those stuff out there. <laughs> hey, they only got my email, baby. Oh, Lord. That's what it is. Man. That's what it is. King and I Life Podcast. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Yeah, all right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having us. <laughs>